Welcome in this video. We are going to implement the famous NERF paper. So this is a very useful paper if you want to do a view synthesis or 3D reconstruction. So these are the results we'll get by the end of this video. So first we will learn a 3D model of this uh, of this object based on uh, based on 2D images, and then we can regenerate new viewpoints of the uh, object even though they were not present in our data set. And we can also do other stuff such as, for example, generating a camera path around the object and visualizing the object from different viewpoints on generating uh, videos. So let's dive directly into the implementation. Uh, we'll use a PyTorch for the implementation uh, and also a few other libraries such as NumPy and Matplotlib for uh, visualizing, visualizing the uh, results. Okay, so the North model is a very simple model. It's just a, a simple MLP uh, but uh, before sending the data to the MLP, we will use positional encoding. Uh, we will come to that in a moment, and that's why we have those parameters in the constructor. We need the, um, the, di the, the feature dimension of the positional encoding for the position and for the direction. Apart from that, it's just a simple MLP uh, with a skip connection. So first we have a first block that will take the, uh, um, um, the embedded position, uh, just a simple uh, MLP with a ReLU uh, activation functions. And then we have a second block uh, that will uh, take the same uh, input, so uh, the the positional uh, the the uh, embedded uh, position uh, because it's a skip connection. And we we take also now the, the hidden dimension because we will also take the output of the first block. Maybe we can have a quicker look at this uh, at this uh, at a cartoon of this so that it makes more sense. So we have created this first block. Uh, that is taking uh, 60 dimension as input or 63. Uh, we'll see that in a moment why. Uh, and then with the second block that is taking those uh, 256 features as well as the uh, as the input again. Uh, we we use some uh, we use some skip connections. Okay. So now we are at this part. We've implemented the first two blocks, and then there is we need to implement the tail of the neural network. So we will uh, output sigma, and then we will also predict the RGB later on. Uh, we'll have new inputs now in the direction. So why is that? It's because the density um, in the volumetric uh, representation uh, integral, uh, the density is not dependent on the direction, while the color is dependent on the direction. Uh, in this video, I'm going. Uh, I'm just focusing on the implementation. Uh, if you're interested, I have a full course about NERF. Uh, the link is in the uh, in the description in case you want to understand a bit more the equations uh, on want to understand wondering uh, in more depth. Okay, so then we have the third block that is taking as input uh, the direction as well as the uh, hidden dimension. So basically, this is uh, this block that is taking uh, the direction um, as well as this uh, 256 uh, feature or vector. Uh, on the, the block 2 predicted uh, the hidden dimension plus 1, so 1 is the density. Okay, great. So now that we have, um, we have created our blocks, uh, we can also uh, store the uh, the embedded uh, the, the dimension for the embedding uh, for the position and for the direction then as for any uh, okay yeah. first we need to compute the uh, to to um, try this positional encoding so basically uh, standard neural network are biased towards running low frequency signals uh, we want to run uh, 3d scenes that are high that have high frequencies in it so what we need to do is to do use positional encoding to allow the neural network to run high frequencies so basically, we just map the uh, input to uh, that is a three-dimensional to a 63-dimensional uh, uh, feature vector. Um, so 63 for the position, 24 for the direction. Uh, and this is just uh, this formula that is described in the paper and that I discussed in more detail in my course. Okay, and then we can just uh, override the forward pass in um, uh, as, as we need to do for any uh, PyTorch module. Uh, so first we embedded uh, we embedded the uh, position and the direction, and then we feed them to our pipeline. Pipeline so block one, block two, block three, block four, and then we can uh, return the, the color or the density uh, for every uh, position and direction. Okay, so now what we can do is uh, compute a function that will compute the accumulated transmittance along a way. Um, so that's a simple formula that is described in the paper. Maybe we can have a quick look at it. Uh, okay. So okay, so basically we will just implement this uh, formula uh, on basically ty, which is equal to the exponential of the sum 
um, or maybe we can have a look at this. So if we write AI, which is equal to one minus uh, exponential of minus sigma delta i, uh, we can rewrite this Ti, which is known as the accumulated transmittance, as a, a cumulative product of those term AI. So this is uh, what we are doing there. So uh, yeah, just an helper function that we'll use in the rendering uh, equation. Uh, now let's uh, let's focus on the rendering part. So we take as input our model, uh, some rays that are represented by the origin on the direction, and we also take hn on hf, uh, which are our uh, parameters uh, in the rendering equation. So basically, these are the bonds of our integral. Um, so we'll use we'll do a volumetric integration along our way, and these are the bonds uh, along which we need to do the integration. On number of bins, the number of Monte Carlo. Uh, oh, we are not doing Monte Carlo integration. Why you think? Uh, yeah, we are approximating the uh, the integral with a sum. So this is the number of uh, of bins we use for doing the integration. Okay. So the first thing is to sample points along the way. So we uh, sample t uh, between uh, h n and h f, and then we can use these uh, t values to get some uh, x values along the way. So we'll do that uh, in a few lines. So first we compute delta, so the difference between uh, 2t. Uh, so this is basically the width of each bin, and that will be useful to compute the integral. And then uh, based on t, we can compute x. So basically the position of a ray at time t is the origin plus t times d. So we are computing a point x along the way. And then we resize the direction of the rays uh, so that they have the same size as their uh, origin. And now we can smear all that in the north model. Uh, so get back a color on a sigma for each uh, position along the way. And that will be useful for computing the rendering equation. So maybe if we go back to the paper very quickly, uh, what we've done so far is sampling rays along each, uh, sampling points along each way. And now we can use those points to compute the, um, the color of each way uh, based on volumetric rendering. Uh, so this is the last step that we need to do is to use those values to compute the, uh, the color of each ray. And basically, this is just, just the rendering equation that is described in the paper. And we are also using regularization for white background uh, because uh, we are using synthetic data on our background is white. Uh, you can remove this part if you don't have a white background. OK, well, now we can put everything together. Uh, we can implement our training loop. So it, it will take as input our model, an optimizer on a scheduler, as well as a data loader uh, with our training data. Uh, and basically, we just need to do supervised learning uh, with a data set with 2D images. So we know uh, what is the, um, the color of each way, and we can do supervised learning to train the North model. OK, so let's create a training loss to, lo to log the values. Let's iterate over the number of epochs, and let's iterate over, data over our data loader. And then what we can do from the data loader, we can fetch the origin, the direction, and the uh, target pixel values of each way. And then we can regenerate a target pixel value. So this is very similar to uh, supervised learning. You uh, smear the data to your model, and your uh, model will give you the uh, predicted value. And then we do regression, so we compare the target value with the regenerated value, and we do a gradient descent step uh, with our optimizer. And if we're using a scheduler, we can also do a, a step of the scheduler. Uh, usually, we use schedulers with a NERF model uh, because they uh, very quickly converge towards the global shape of the, um, of the object. And then in the last uh, epochs, they uh, refine the details. And usually, we use a scheduler to improve that part. OK, and what we can also do is, after each epoch, uh, test the, the model. So uh, we will create a test function to test the model and we can regenerate the um, novel views, so from the testing uh, data loader to do the testing. Testing is all taking a bit of time with NERF, so uh, you, are not, uh, you don't have to, to test the whole data set. Maybe what you can do is only test a few images or just uh, uh, draw uh, images randomly from the testing data set and just test for those images. OK, and then we can return the training loss. So let's move on to implementing the testing function. And then we will be done, and we can put all the pieces together. OK, so we have a test function that is taking the same parameters, or at least the parameters that are needed for the rendering equation. That is, for example, the number of bins, hn on hf. And it's also taking an image index, 
Um, so basically, uh, that tells us in our, our testing data set which image we need to use. Based on that, from our testing data set, we can fetch the, um, the rays related to that image. And then we can, um, we can chunk those origin on direction because uh, feeding all of them at the same time in the North model will uh, result it in out of memory. So we chunk the, those origin on directions and we, um, we, we do some batching. So we, uh, we generate the image batch per batch in order to avoid out of memory issues. So once we, we've regenerated the pixel values and we've encoded them in a, in a list, we can uh, convert the list to PyTorch tensors using the concatenation function from PyTorch. And then we can uh, reshape our image um, on this, uh, with this command and then show it and uh, save the figure. Okay, so now we have all the pieces together. So we can uh, create our training data set, testing data set, create our model, uh, its optimizer and scheduler. Uh, so it's very easy. Um, NERF, although it seems complicated while doing 3D reconstruction, uh, the model is very simple. It's a simple MLP. Uh, on in about 100 lines of code, we can implement it. So that's something that's not very complicated at all. Okay, so now that we have all the pieces together, uh, we can create our data loader from the uh, training data, and then we can feed it to the uh, training function to train our model. So that's all, a minimal implementation of NERV uh, that will give you a great results as you, see, as you have seen in the beginning of this video. Uh, again, I have a very, uh, I have a long course about NERV that is more than 10 hours, uh, that uh, gives much more details, uh, much more uh, ways to improve the code and to improve your model. So if you're interested, do not hesitate to have a, a look at it. Uh, if you like this video, uh, leave the thumbs up and uh, subscribe for more videos like that.